This is Hockey Night in Greenfield on Bear Country 95.3. Today's game, the Western Mass Division 3A playoffs. The Greenfield Green Wave, the number three seed against the East Hampton Eagles, the number two seed. Today's Chris Collins along with Todd Howe. Our studio producer is Dave Reno. Tonight, the big game. We've been talking about this game for a while, and now, finally, high school hockey back on the airwaves. The Greenfield Green Wave Todd Howe against the East Hampton Eagles, a couple of teams very familiar with one another. The winner of this game goes to championship, uh, the championship game on Thursday. Yeah, this is, this is I, I'm very excited about this game, I'm telling you. These two teams have played twice this year, and both times they've walked away with a tie. One, one score was four to four, one was three to three. They are very close teams, and I expect another battle. Uh, I, I really do think that uh, these two teams are identical, and it's gonna be a lot of fun today. I can't wait. Greenfield, though, comes in missing a very key element. A big part of their offense will not be in the lineup today because of a penalty that occurred at the end of the regular season. Yeah, versus Amherst in their last regulation game, uh, where they won the game three to nothing, Evan Simmons, uh, the third leading scorer for the team, uh, was penalized for a kicking motion in really part of a scrum activity, we'll call it. And uh, the unfortunate part is when he got penalized for that kicking motion, it comes along with a two-game DQ, which means he, he's disqualified to play in the Western Mass playoffs. That's today, and if Greenfield wins, it's in the finals. It's, it's a very unfortunate situation for them, and it breaks up that powerful first line. And he is also a 100-point score, which is, you know, to, to replace that kind of offense, a 100-point career score, and he got his 100th point against this team in, a, in one of those tie games. So that's a big loss. Uh, is there anybody that you think is going to pick up the, the slack offensively for Greenfield? Well, I mean, his, his line mates have been uh, Doug Hineski and Brian Bauman. And the question will be, who will they throw up with him? You might see Sean O'Sullivan go up there. And I, I think it's a great opportunity for him. Um, in the first two games, uh, Simmons ended up scoring two of the seven goals that Greenfield scored. So they're, they're losing a big, big piece of their offense. And it's really going to be up to the other guys to kind of take it up. For the East Hampton Eagles, Garen Fugel is the guy to look out for. He leads the Eagles with 23 goals and 11 assists. And Christopher Tenzar had 26 points throughout the regular season. So we're going to see what uh, Greenfield can do to contain that East Hampton offense. We'll take a quick break, come back with more of our pregame show. East Hampton and Greenfield High School Hockey from the Olympia in West Springfield on Bear Country 95.3. Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Gray, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. I'm back out here at the Olympia in West Springfield High School Hockey. Greenfield and East Hampton hooking up in the Division 3A semifinals. The winner of this game goes on to meet the winner of the wrap-up game, the nightcap game between number five, Belchertown, and number one, Chicopee. How about those Belchertown Orioles taking the number five seed, and they're still in. Yeah, they had a nice game uh, against uh, Chicopee Comp for the, uh, between the four or five game. And both these teams obviously faced off against Belchertown. And they were both very successful. And I think both of them went 2-0. And uh, they could they could knock off Chicopee. Chicopee wants to make revenge for what happened last year to them in the playoffs. So we'll see what happens there. Follows this game. Now both these teams, Greenfield and East Hampton, had a bye in the quarterfinal round coming in. So they meet in the semifinals, and they're seeded 2-3. Uh, and three. Those seedings, let's talk about that a little bit. How do they determine those? Yeah, it's really been the discussion out in the uh, lobby here because Greenfield posted a record of 14-4-2 which in hockey equates to about 30 points, and East Hampton went 10, 3, and 7 for 27 points, and so everyone's looking at it like, well, how does Greenfield get seated below East Hampton? And as many of you hockey fans out there, or basketball fans out there, will realize with the Greenfield girls, they use the Walker system, which means the record doesn't mean everything. East Hampton played two games against the Division Three foe of Westside, and they made those two ties. 
and those two ties are worth more than a D3A win, and that moves them just ahead of Greenfield for the seed. And most people will look at that and say, well, what difference does it make between two and three? Everywhere else, not much. Here in hockey, it's a huge difference. The home team is allowed the last change. So what that means is that the East Hampton coaching staff will be able to see who Greenfield puts on the ice for a shift, and they can make the last minute decision and put out either one they want to try and score against them, or one they know they're going to defend hard and put their def best defenseman on the ice. So it's a huge issue in this game, and we'll see if it plays out. Well, it's certainly an advantage, and, and, and but you know, you still got to play the game on the ice, and of course, Greenfield's been looking for some goaltending, some good goaltending from the sophomore, Riley Drew. He's been their money man this year. He's played most of the games this year. He's had a, a phenomenal year of save percentages, uh, 89%, and that puts him probably third in the league, and he's really played strong. He's played most of their games, uh, looking at their track record. I think their, uh, their backup, Ruganis, went in for a couple games this year, so uh, he's the man. And not only that, but this is the first time in the postseason for both of these programs since I think 2012. I'm pretty sure. I mean, they haven't. Neither one of these teams have had much more postseason experience. So one of them is going to go on, and they've, they've tied twice. There will be no tie today. There will be a winner this time. Uh, we're we're going to finish this some way, somehow, and uh, we'll we'll see if we're able to put in some more in the net. You know, their history, tie tie, uh, that's rare. It's really rare in high school hockey. So it, it's going to be a close game, and we're going we're gonna to have a good battle here today, I think. We will take one more break. Come back, starting lineups, Hampton, and the opening faceoff. Greenfield and East Hampton on Bear Country 95.3. Here we go, 15 minute periods in high school hockey. Greenfield wearing the visiting. I guess, is that black and green? Black, green, and white? And uh, East Hampton with the home white with red trim. And of course, these two programs, there's a, a long history, a long history, which we and I have been a part of as players for Greenfield. And there's always been a great rivalry. So this is gonna be, a, and apparently, two very evenly matched programs, although this is a year of change for Greenfield. This is the first year. It's a county-wide program, so that's added some depth. And it's added a lot of uh, ability for the coaching staff to make changes when they have to. Well, the big thing with going countywide, they really wanted to come up with a team that was competitive for the last couple of years. You know, you spoke earlier that Greenfield hadn't made the playoff in about five years. And so for the last couple of years, they weren't even close to making the playoffs. And they've now combined for the purpose of being able to get into games like this. And here they are, they're in the playoffs. Um, it wasn't like they overtook the division. They're ranked third. So it, it was a perfect match. It's working well, and there's a lot of kids out there and a lot of quality skaters. Tenzar is out there for East Hampton with Delisle and Wilson. In net for East Hampton, by the way, is Nate Barnes. They had two goalies really split the season. His save percentage was at 92%. And uh, here we go. Bauman, Haneski, and Barnes, the line for Greenfield. Puck controlled by the way. They bounce it up, and it goes into the Greenfield bench. And the faceoff will be just I don't know, it's inside the Greenfield zone because that's where the puck was shot from. I see the coaching staff saying something to uh, the defenseman who threw it in the boards, wondering if they're shooting at him or shooting it out of the rink. You got to be careful when you do that, though, because that can be a delay a game penalty, too. Draw to the left of Drew, and Greenfield's able to clear the zone. Back after it's Delisle being pursued by Barnes. Delisle is able to clear the East Hampton zone. Puck at center ice. Eagles dump it in. Wide of Drew. Battle in the corner for it. Knocked up the boards by Hineski. And out. Push up ahead to Bauman. Bauman on the right wing. Bauman slides it in front. And it's deflected right by the net. And it's cleared by East Hampton. Up the boards. Up but not out. Kept in by Jordan who slams it back down behind the East Hampton net. So a good early bid there for Greenfield by Bauman. It was a no angle shot and the rebound, it actually hit the goal in the shoulder, popped straight up. No one knew where it was gonna land. And another, is a rebound opportunity for Greenfield too as we head up the other direction. East Hampton able to poke it out to center ice. Kyle Barnes pushes it up the boards but it slammed right back in by the Eagles. 13.58 to go, period one, no score from the Olympia. Greenfield clears the zone. Back after it's Matt Sullivan trying to push it up ahead to the right wing. And Greenfield's able to knock it back down. It's deflected, so no icing. It goes all the way down behind Barnes on the East Hampton end of the ring. That was a gift for Greenfield. I think he was intending to ice it, and uh, the guy knocked it out of the air for him. Greenfield's able to keep it in at the blue line. 
He's down to the right wing boards, but it's cleared up and out to center ice. This is McColgan pushing it ahead on the right wing to O'Connor. O'Connor dumps around behind the net. Around the forecheck is Boyle. Boyle slams it back to the point to O'Connor, who backhands it down low again. Boyle after it. And then trying to push it behind his greenfield up the boards. And that is going to probably be an icing. Yes. Yeah, we'll bring that down the other end. And it looks like trying to figure out early what Greenfield wants to do on their end is they're going against the defenseman and kind of pushing the puck past them. They're going to try and use their speed to get around these defensemen. And we'll, we'll see how effective that is. And it just seems at this point both teams are really feeling each other out and trying to get a sense of how this game's going to go. East Hampton does seem to have a size advantage just looking at the uh, guys on the ice right now. Face off to the right of Riley Drew. Draw control by East Hampton. They push it ahead. The Drew shot save, buck loose in the middle, right by the net, and it's pushed into the corner. So good scrum there down low. Fugil took the puck right from the faceoff and right of the net. We thought we could have had our first tripping penalty on that play. And we might have a breakaway here. Steal. Partial breakaway. This is Haneski. All around Barnes. Shot score! Five hole! Haneski! And it's 1 0 Greenfield. What a great play. He attacked the defenseman, poked the puck away from him. And like I just said, they wanted to use the speed, and now I know why. Because Haneski just ran away from everybody, and sometimes goalies leave a giant five hole, as you know, and there was a giant five hole, and he took advantage of it at 12.51 in the first period. That's an early lead for Greenfield. Dougie Haneski was off the races, and he just poked it between the legs of Barnes. one nothing. Greenfield draws first blood. Face off at center ice. That was the first shot of the game, too. Great start for Greenfield. They couldn't have asked for anything more. Face off control by Greenfield. Brian Bauman now. It's a hip check, but is able to avoid it. Dumps it down behind the net. East Hampton net, that is. Eagles try to clear the boards. Can't in deep as Barnes for Greenfield pushing for it. And it gets knocked around the net to Dylan Wilson. Wilson pinched off by Haneski. He's still out there. That goal was unassisted. Uh oh. I think you may have too many men on the ice. Absolutely. Greenfield just tried to change on the fly, and they opened the box to let the player out. He immediately played the puck before the other player could get off the ice. Easy call for the referees, and Greenfield will now have to kill a penalty with 12.24 left. Bad timing to clear the puck up by the bench like that. Just a bad break for Greenfield, but a big opportunity here for East Hampton to get an equalizer with 12.24 to go in the first period. Greenfield with a 1-0 lead. Face off to the left of Riley Drew. And it's going to be a five on four advantage for two minutes for the Eagles. We're just waiting now for Greenfield to send someone to the penalty box. It's a bench minor, so not a specific player penalty. And so someone has to uh, serve the time. Now, wait a minute now. They're, they're talking it over with the coaching staff. <laughs> they don't want, I think they want to keep Bauman available, I think. I think they're trying to sneak Bauman onto the ice after they had already set their four <laughs> players. but. You know, kudos for the attempt. Very sneaky. So it will be uh, number 14, Adam Savoy, to serve the penalty. Draw goes Ooh. back and goes through the legs of the East Hampton defenseman and out of the zone. O'Connor now goes cross ice as the Eagles now at their own blue line. Pass up ahead to Dylan Wilson. Wilson can't control it. Now backhands it up ahead to Fugel. Fugel goes left, goes behind the net, being pursued by Bryant. East Hampton comes away with it. Now they're deep in the left corner. Back to the point. Delisle. Cross ice pass. Shot by Tenzar is blocked by Haneski. East Hampton contains though. Tenzar shot from the point goes wide of the net. 121 to go on the man advantage. Greenfield trying to clear what they can. East Hampton is just piling up players in front of their screen. They want to make sure the goalie can't see this puck and hopefully can get by him. Tenzar's cross ice pass shot went wide. And O'Connor now after it in the corner. Greenfield trying to clear, but they can't. Tenzar now at the right point. Slap shot, no, slap pass actually. Deflected off of the Greenfield player into the corner. That's McGoldrick after it. McGoldrick knocks down the East Hampton player, but the Eagles keep it in. Tenzar now, right point again. Wrist shot blocked wide again by Haneski. Good penalty kill by Greenfield. That's two blocks by Haneski laying out for both of them. Puck is now in the corner again. This is O'Connor trying to slide in front. He gets in the corner by the Greenfield player. I think that might have been the Goldrick again. But East Hampton keeps it. Back to the point. Delisle, one-timer, shot gloved by Riley Drew. Face off to his right with 29 seconds left in the man advantage. Wow, Jacob Bryant is throwing the body around behind the net in the corners. 
He's setting the tone early. East Hampton's going to know if they're going in the corners, they better look for him. He's a big body. You can't miss him. But he's throwing the body around, throwing some good body checks. Face off to the right of Drew. Eli Boyle on the draw for East Hampton. Slides it back to the point to Delisle. Delisle on the wing to Batchelder. Now back down low. Trying to set up a box. Back to the point to Delisle. Delisle, wrist shot tipped wide in the middle by Batchelder. Yvonne goes behind the net. Battle for it. East Hampton comes away with it. Batchelder, back to the point to Delisle. Down low, backhand pass, short side shot save by Drew, shot taken by McColgan, and the penalty is over, We're back to even strength. Batchelder in the corner, now Greenfield slams it around this other side. Matt Sullivan now takes a bump. Battle for it in the corner. Cam Barnes trying to knock it loose. And East Hampton still controls, they knock it back on the right wing boards, and Greenfield finally is able to clear it, and they will ice it to relieve the pressure. That's one of the things when you come out of a penalty. You've got four guys for Greenfield on the ice, and they're killing the penalty. Their mindset is defense, defense, defense. And even though that player came out of the box, they were still playing that same way. Icing's not a bad play in that situation. Let's get a fresh set of guys out there and maybe break up the offense that East Hampton was enjoying on the power play. Face off to the left of Riley Drew. 9.56 to go, period one. one nothing Greenfield on an unassisted breakaway goal by Doug Haneski. Greenfield's able to clear the zone. Back after it's Matt Sullivan, who pushes it back up ahead. The two on two break. McColgan shot blocked wide by the Greenfield defender. Bryant. Bryant again, banging in the corner, going after it. Sullivan now dumps it back down low. McColgan and Bryant battling. McColgan comes over. Oh! Slides it in front, nobody there. Goes cross ice. Greenfield kind of hemmed in right now. And the Waves able to clear the zone. Poked up ahead to LaFleur. Back to get it is Matt Sullivan for East Hampton. Greenfield wants a fresh set of legs out there. We haven't been looking to our right much except for that breakaway, so East Hampton's playing a good offensive game. They're still riding away from the penalty. The Eagles clear the zone. This is O'Connor up the right side. O'Connor tries to slide in front, stolen up by the Greenfield defender and cleared out of the zone. East Hampton cycles back to their own end. They lob it up ahead to Sullivan. Let's see, that's uh, McColgan now. McColgan on left wing, being pursued by Jordan, goes behind the net, slammed around. Dylan Wilson now on the right wing boards. Puck is stolen away by Greenfield. This is Neski again, battling for it. Behind his own net, being hassled. By Dylan Wilson, Wilson, yep. By Wilson. Back up to the point, Pat O'Connor. Now turnaround wrist shot by Tenzar is blocked wide. Greenfield trying to get it out of their own end. They are really hemmed in time. East Hampton's keeping it in the zone, but I'm looking up at the chart. They don't have a single shot on net. That one shot they had where uh, Riley made the save was a um, going to go wide anyway. And Icing will take a break. 8.01 to go in the first period. 30 second break. This is high school hockey on Bear Country 95.3. Puck knocked down into the East Hampton end and off the draw. A quick shot by the Eagles is blocked wide, and now the puck is back in the East Hampton end of the ice. Bounced up the boards. Cassie Wozniak trying to keep it in. And the Eagles swing it around their own net as they try to clear. Now a bump on the boards by LaFleur, battling for it for Greenfield. Overhelped by Sean O'Sullivan. And O'Sullivan comes away with it, cuts right. It's knocked down by the East Hampton defender, and the Eagles clear. Long cross ice pass. Opportunity here. Shot save, rebound, score! That was Tenzar with the shot. And the rebound follow. We'll see what they get it to. I think Dylan Wilson is the one who put the net, put the puck in the net to tie this game up at one on their first shot of the game. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a missed opportunity on the hit to try and to, to take the puck away from Tenzar. And he found the breaking Wilson in the slot. And he went five hole on Riley Drew. So we're all tied at one with 7.09 to go in period number one. It was a 50 50 puck along the boards. The Greenfield defenseman, if you're not going to get the puck, you've got to take the body. He got neither, gave him a shot. He was able to put it on net, and the rebound went right in the slot. 
and an easy one top shelf and we're tied up at one to one. Headman pass and this is going to be no call. Wow, that was an obvious hook. Yeah, I immediately looked at the referees expecting that. Oh, and Barnes got leveled by the East Hampton player. Now breaking through is McCogan. He is blocked. That was Jake Batchelter laying Greenfield on their back. Now Barnes breaking in. And Bauman's able to intercept the clearing pass by the goaltender of East Hampton. And he was cleared his own. Bauman back to get it though, knocks it back. East Hampton and Greenfield changing on the fly. That man passed to Haneski at the red line, loses control. And it's dumped back in by McColgan. This is unbelievable. You, you, you look at these two, there's four shots on that. We have two goals. Now here's a steal. Fugel stole it, but couldn't control it for the shot. Now Tenzar to Fugel behind the net. And Fugel staying with it. Tries to go cross ice. Quick wrist shot saved by Drew. That was Batchelder set up on the left wing. Puck comes back around and is cleared out by Bauman. And this is going to be icing. 5.53 to go in period one. I have to say, we've played less than 10 minutes in this game, and Greenville has iced the puck quite a bit. And they are getting pressured by East, East Hampton, but we got a big rink. I'd like to see them kind of knock it off the other boards and maybe avoid the icing, because it's just giving them another opportunity in your defensive zone for a faceoff. Faceoff to the left of Riley Drew. On the draws, Fugel. And he wins it. Back to the point. Quick slapper blocked in front. Actually, you have to hit the East Hampton player. Now, wrist shot by Tenzai is saved by Drew. Tenzai now battling for it, knocks it behind the net. Wilson is after it for East Hampton, and the puck is cleared by Greenfield. And that's a much better play. Cassidy Wozniak did nice it, sent it on the other end, and Greenfield had an opportunity to get to it. It was a 50 50 puck again. Wilson now up the right side for East Hampton. And a weird angle shot goes behind the net. And it's back around to the far boards. This is Fugel now after it for East Hampton. Battling forward in the corner is Alec Jordan. And a penalty coming up. And I think this is going to be on Greenfield, is it not? Alec Jordan. Jordan. Yep. Looked like a boarding penalty, and that's exactly what it's going to be. So Alec Jordan will go to the box, and East Hampton will once again have a main advantage. Greenfield has been playing the body well, and this was just a little too much, a little far away from the boards. Uh, boarding penalty is usually when you have a player that's not up against the boards, and you slam them into the boards. It's usually, again, another easy call. Uh, these refs are not calling a lot of penalties. You know, they've only had the bench minor in that one. And East Hampton again goes on the power play for another two minutes. Face off to the right of Riley Drew. 5-11 to go in the period. Two minute penalty on Greenfield. And a power play for East Hampton. Greenfield clears it all the way down to Matt Barnes. And the Eagles goaltender fires it up to Pat O'Connor on the right wing. O'Connor now able to push it into Greenfield territory, but the wave's able to clear. I got to say, I like the uh, Greenfield penalty kill. Oral PD challenges whoever has the puck, kind of pushes them one direction or another, and then the backup will try and force him either in the corner or the backup being Haneski. Tenzar now driving through. Swings it across. Shot score! Beautiful setup by Tenzar. And camped on the doorstep was Fugel. And it's 2 1 East Hampton. Player brought the puck in on the right side, all the way around the net. Took a quick turn, quick turn as if he was going to try and stuff the puck in, but threw it right across. And it was actually Pat O'Connor who got the goal. He was just camped. There was no way, and that was just a bang bang play. No, there was nothing the goalie could do on that. You, you got to protect your post when he's coming around the corner like that. He threw it in front, perfect. That's the second assist for Tenzar, and he's continuing his strong play against Greenfield this year. That's a power play goal, 2-1 East Hampton, and they're back on the attack again. Here's a wrist shot and a save by Drew, and he will cover. Faceoff will be to his left with 4.31 to go in the period. Most of the play has been in the uh, Greenfield defensive zone. East Hampton doesn't have a lot of shots on net, but they're definitely keeping Drew busy and, and moving around. Faceoff to the left of Riley Drew. Greenfield controls it. They're trying to dump it, but it's kept in. And East Hampton now swinging it around the net, back to the point to Delisle. Delisle trying to keep in, he does, dumps it down on the left wing. He's back around behind the Greenfield net. Onto the stick of Cassie Wozniak, and goes back around the other way. After it is Matt Sullivan for the Eagles. Also in there is McColgan now. McColgan swings the net. Gets bumped by Bryant. And Greenfield can clear the zone. Just temporarily. They're going to knock it up ahead. Kasny Wozniak now on the left wing forecheck. 
But back to get it first is Delisle. Delisle swings the net and head mends it up to McColgan. Tips it into the ringfield end. About to get it, Jake Bryant. The big freshman defenseman tries to clear but can't. It's kept in. And now Bryce Jordan for Greenfield tries to clear it out. Quick shot from the point goes behind the Greenfield net. Most of this period has been played in the East End or Greenfield end of the ice. Yeah, with three and a half minutes left in the first period, the shots are uh, now seven to one. Shot saved by Drew. And the point by the line. Now Greenfield's able to clear it out. This is Brian Bauman. Bauman now. Tough angle shot. Barnes with the save. Big rebound. Well, it's cleared out by Delisle. And there's a two-on-one break for East Hampton. This is Tenzar. Tenzar takes the shot. Saved by Drew. Rebound knocked loose. And Greenfield's able to skate it and clear it out. It's Tenzar, another, another situation where there was a 50-50 puck and the Greenfield did not take the body in the defense. And they had a two-on-one advantage. And, and Tenzar... Decided to take the shot this time. Paneski centering pass, shot by Bryant. Wide of the net as Barnes came out to cut the angle. Puck is still loose in the center of the ice, but East Kempton's able to clear it to the boards, and they finally get it out of the zone. Delisle. Now he's a steal by Wozniak on the clearing pass. Wozniak, good move, shot, just wide of the net. Rebound by O'Sullivan. Tries to center it, can't. Blocked by East Hampton. 2.22 to go in the period. Great move by Wozniak. She just stared right at the defenseman and put it between the body and the stick and got a scoring opportunity. And Stugio, one on two, shot is deflected wide by Jordan of Greenfield to the far boards. Headman pass out intercepted by Sullivan. Sullivan shot deflected out of the rink with 2.03 to go in the first period. Nice play by Bryce Jordan right there. Greenfield tried to get the puck out of the zone and is intercepted by a defenseman. And Bryce Jordan came out from his defensive spot to attack. Blocked the shot with a stick and put it out of play, which gives a face-off to the right of Drew. And another opportunity for East Hampton, and, and Greenfield just really has to start getting some offensive motion going. Draw to the right of Drew, and Puck is pushed ahead. And back behind the net, and cleared up and not out. The fuck it kept stayed in the uh, Greenfield end. Back shoulder now. Back to the point to Sullivan. Sullivan back down low. They try to slide it in the front. It's blocked by Drew. Pushed back up the boards and out. That prior play where it hit the stanchion and stayed in the zone, they had a play set up. Doug Hineski was free. And if that puck gets by that defenseman, he's probably looking at a breakaway. That was a nice set play. O'Connor pushes it up ahead. And pinching it off is Jordan. Now it goes up to the left wing boards to Sean O'Sullivan, who pokes it in. It's going to get off for a line change. That man pass, he's tempted, here come the Eagles. This is Tenzar, excuse me, that's uh, McColgan. McColgan, a tough angle shot, saved by Riley Drew. East Hampton, and this is probably why they're kind of controlling the play right now, is Greenfield's defense have been almost standing on their blue line when the puck's deep in the zone, allowing an easy breakout past the red line to East Hampton. They've been getting a lot of three on two opportunities because I think the defense just aren't moving up enough. They got the defense needs to be more offensive. Face off to the right of Riley Drew. Fugill on the draw for East Hampton. Greenfield wins the draw. Slammed around the boards by Bryant and out of the zone. Back after it's Jake Delisle for the Eagles. And East Hampton is able to clear the zone. Final minute of the period. Dylan Wilson now. Trying to slide it in front. Blocked by Bryant. Now... Wilson again, trying to turn for a shot. It's over to Tenzar, shot's blocked, turnaround shot. Ergill still with it, and a save by Riley Drew. They lost sight of the puck, and the faceoff will be to his left. Fusion was all alone. He, he's shaking his head now because he had a great opportunity. Drew went down early to try and block it. He took his time, but he lost control of the puck, and, and Drew really closed the legs and covered it right up. Today's game being brought to you in part by the Greenfield Police Association, Jenden Auto Parts, East Hampton Savings Bank, and Kobe Hibachi Sushi Bar. Draw control by East Hampton, dumped behind the net. This is Wilson again after it. He gets bumped, and then Bauman comes away with it. Up the boards and out. Headman pass to O'Sullivan. Sean O'Sullivan one on two, and he gets a nice poke check by the East Hampton player to relieve him of the puck. Big hit in front of the penalty box. And now here comes Bauman again. Off the turnover. Bauman trying to slide it in front. Can't. 
And O'Connor pushes it around the boards. Up ahead to Fugue. Five seconds left. And the puck is slammed back into the Greenfield zone, and that's going to do it in the first period. We played one period from the Olympia and West Springfield on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. It's East Hampton 2, Greenfield 1. We'll come back with our between periods discussion after this on Bear Country 95.3. Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future, insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employees. Attorney Daniel Gray is Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. At the end of one period of play, the East Hampton Eagles lead the Greenfield Green Wave 2-1 in the Western Mass Division 3A semifinal. Winner of this game goes on to play the winner of Belcher Town and Chicopee which is later today. Shots on goal. Uh, East Hampton well out shooting Greenfield 9-2. And Todd, a lot of that first period was played in the Greenfield end of the ice. Yeah, Greenfield, when they did have the opportunity to get the puck in the offensive zone, I just feel like their defense are way back, way too far, and these guys were able to knock it out of the zone to a wing waiting between the red and blue line going in the offensive zone. And they could just touch it and send it in and, and, and start their play again. I think Greenfield, if you think about it, take away that breakaway, we weren't looking to our right <laughs> very much at all. We might even get stiff necks at the end yeah, of this. Yeah, right, exactly. And I think Greenfield just meet, needs to be a little more offensive. The defensemen in the zone are playing fantastic. The body checking is unbelievable. If East Hampton's going in the corner, they know they're in the corner. And Greenfield has to stay out of the penalty box. A couple of uh, penalties in that first period, one of which resulted in a, a power play goal. Yeah, the bench minor was unfortunate. I feel bad for the guy running the door. You see him open the door and then see the puck, and, and that's really up to the player that he's going to realize he cannot touch the puck until that other player leaves the ice. And once you do, it's the easiest call in the world. It, it, very it also seemed like the East Hampton very much controlled the neutral zone. I mean, between the blue lines, it seemed like they had a better flow, better, better movement of the puck, and more opportunities, obviously, as a result. Yeah, Greenfield, even though we look at it and we think East Hampton's putting all this pressure on, it's not as much as the amount of icings that they've had. They just iced the puck way too much. They want to just get it out of the zone. They have a lot of fast guys on this ice. And, and Greenfield, I know, based on how the game started, that's how they wanted to play. Get it past the defenseman and beat them to the puck. Well, obviously, the, the Greenfield goal scored by, scored by Nesky was unassisted on the breakaway. Win five hole on Barnes in the first shot of the game. I would like to think that if they've got that kind of speed, they might want to run a couple of hangers up by the red line, try and chip it out, get some more shots like that. They had another play set up just for Hineski, and the defenseman shot it off the glass just as he's supposed to, but just hit a stanchion and ended up staying in the zone. Not at all what they wanted to do, and he was alone. He was all free. I was all ready to, to kind of give you the nudge and say, oh, watch this. And it, and it just didn't happen. It was an unfortunate, but you can see they have those set plays in line, but East Hampton is keeping the puck in the zone, and I would guess... 11, 12 minutes in the offensive zone? Yeah, I would say for, for most of that period, with the exception of the, of the goal by, by Hineski, there wasn't a whole lot of offensive. There were a couple of, of good takeaways. Sullivan had a break a couple times. Cassie Wozniak had a nice play. But for the most part, it's been an East Hampton offensively, and, and C.J. Tenzar as good as advertised. He's got two assists. Assists on both goals. He had an opportunity for a third if you want to go for the uh, assist hat trick, if you want to call it that. Yeah. And, and he took the shot. And, yeah, he's played it. He handed one off to Wilson and handed one off to O'Connor. And, honestly, the goal scorers had the easy job. He did the hard work. He got him the puck in a great position, and, and they buried it in an almost open net. We are in between periods. Awaiting the start of the second period on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. It's East Hampton to 2, Greenfield 1, on high school hockey playoff action on Bear Country 95.3. Okay. Play back on. Face off at center ice to start the second period. East Hampton up 2-1. And you draw one by Baumann. He backhands it into the East Hampton zone, right back out to center ice. The back teams in. have uh, switched ends, and Greenfield's hoping that the puck still leans to our left because that's where the East Hampton goal is sitting. 
Varying pass by Jordan hit the referee. Puck is still hanging on the boards. And East Hampton, or Greenfield's able to clear it out to center ice. But the Eagles are able to knock it ahead. This is Tenzar again on the right wing. Battling forward on the right wing board, surrounded by three Greenfield players. And it's backhanded up and out. Bauman up ahead to Barnes. Barnes, shot, saved by up the other Barnes, and then head for, for East Hampton. Rebound controlled by Greenfield. Shot from the point, tipped. This is Kyle Barnes battling for it. Barnes trying to set up Haneski. Puck goes around the other side. Jordan tries to knock it in, can't. And Kyle Barnes dumps it in for Greenfield. Strong play by Kyle Barnes on that shift. Kept the puck in the zone, intercepted a pass. Took a shot on that. Not the biggest kid in the world, but he's got some great moves out there. Now a break up at center ice. This is Wilson for East Hampton. Gonna poke it ahead, being helped by Batchelder. Wilson now in the corner, penalty coming up, and it's gonna be a high stick, I that, believe. That, no penalty, just no a penalty. high stick. Okay, so, in other the, words, yeah. Yeah, the East Hampton player guys, had, yeah. uh, exactly. Yeah. If you hit someone in the helmet, it's a high stick penalty. When you hit the puck above your shoulders, right. that's the high sticking we just got. And uh, the faceoff moves from the Greenfield defensive end to the offensive end against East Hampton's goalie. So a little advantage here. Face off the right of Nate Barnes. Draw one by Greenfield. Back to the point. Slap shot through a screen by McGoldrick. Goes wide of the net. Ethan LaFleur on a four check on the right wing corner. Helped out by O'Sullivan. Big scrum over there. They're trying to kick it loose. As O'Sullivan battling for it. Now O'Sullivan now chasing it behind the net. O'Sullivan tries to slide it in front. Blocked. Second effort. But ends up on the stick of Batchelder. And East Hampton's able to clear the zone. Good opportunity there. Very good opportunity. And Greenfield's doing a better. You can tell the coaches had a discussion because they're doing better. We've had more looks in the offensive zone than we had the whole first period. Ethan LaFleur now with another four check goes ridden behind the net, knocked off the puck by, by Sullivan for East Hampton. And the Eagles are able to clear the zone. And it gets shot back into the East Hampton zone by the East Hampton player. Greenfield on a quick line change. Gives them an opportunity to get some fresh feet out there. That man passed to Batchelder, who's able to clear the East Hampton zone. Batchelder goes cross ice, poked by Barnes. Up ahead, this is Bauman. Bauman scores! Bauman went high on the short side, and he drilled it, and we're tied at two. What a play, and I can already see the difference. I think Greenfield had told their defense, we gotta be a little more aggressive. They moved up on the play, they tapped the puck, and Bauman was able to take that puck from before the blue line, Skate in, and he top shelfed it. No goalie was stopping that. We call that a roofer. Oh, great play. Great way to tie it up. It's now 2-2, two to two and Greenfield has four shots on goal. Two of them found the back of the net. Yeah, the Greenfield Green Wave definitely had a discussion in between periods, and they have come out firing. And they have tied this game at 2-2 two -two at 12.40 to go the in the second period. That puck is pushed up ahead. After it's Delisle, Maurice Hampton swings the net. And the puck is not cleared out, though, kept in by Haneski. Just temporarily, though, as East Hampton clears. Now, Haneski up ahead to Bowman. Bowman now. Quick wrist shot. Saved by Matt Barnes at the blocker. Rebound goes to the board. Tensar is after it. Up and out to center ice, but slammed right back the other way by Bryce Jordan behind the East Hampton net. Refill with a line change. Here come the Eagles. Winding it up. This is Delisle. Delisle. And then swings through. Backhander saved. Delisle almost went coast to coast. And now Tenzar with the puck on the right point. Wrist shot tipped in front. And cleared by Greenfield. Kicked ahead by Lafleur. And Lafleur, first man in. Tenzar is after it. Lafleur, oh! Tenzar rams Lafleur. Now a backhand pass goes through the slot and out of the zone. Tough break. There's no one there. Yeah, the defenseman didn't get to the blue line, couldn't keep it in play, a little tired. Jordan and slams it back into the East Hampton end. Zazula now bangs it up the boards and lifts it out of the zone. McGoldrick now gloves it down and knocks it into the East Hampton end. And the Eagles try to clear. And that's not going to be a penalty at all. No, no penalty, shot it out of play. At the college level, if you shoot the puck out from your defensive zone, it's a penalty. Not at the high school level, so just so just well, a play Well, it used style. to be, I got that penalty a couple of times when I was playing. I don't know that it changed it. No, you were one of those goalies who got a lot of penalties. Faced off to the right of Barnes, and 
in after it is Kyle Barnes for Greenfield centering pass. Nobody there. And but it's dumped right back in by the Greenfield High School team. That's Bowman. He slammed it in. And now Barnes, that's going to be a hand pass. What a difference this period's making. Most of the time has been played in the uh, defensive zone for East Hampton. The shots are three to one for Greenfield. And like I said earlier, I really think that they've had more offensive opportunities in this period alone, and we're only four minutes in. It does seem like they're also double shifting that Bowman line, because that's the hot line right now for Greenfield. Face off to the right of Riley Drew, 10.57 to go in the second period. We're all tied at two, it's a good one. Draw control by Greenfield. Brian now starts to slam it up the boards, kept in at the point by Sullivan. Knocks it behind the net. Centering pass, intercepted by Greenfield, pushed to the boards. And that's O'Sullivan over there battling for it. Wozniak is over there helping out. And East Hampton's trying to come out with it. Now O'Connor with a slap shot, gloved wide of the net by the defenseman, Bryant. Not a real strong scoring opportunity yet, but East Hampton is probably nice to get it out of their zone. And that puck is lifted out of the zone, and it's going to be a face-off to the right of Riley Drew. It's a, it's a very good start to this period. A little more action, which we need to kind of keep warm. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, we are staring across to the, at an unused press box. <laughs> which I still don't quite understand the explanation for that, but we'll... <laughs> it's unused, but the heat's on. That's, the <laughs> That's exactly Yeah. Face off to the right of Riley Drew. Darren Fugel on the draw for the Eagles. Face off run by Greenfield. They won a couple of face offs in this period. And... They try to clear, and they finally do. In the East Hampton territory. Back to get it is C.J. Tenzar. Swings the net. Goes up the right wing boards. Pinch, though, off. Kept in by Bryce Jordan temporarily. And East Hampton's able to clear it back out. Nice play by Bryce. That's exactly what I was saying. You've got to start making some challenges at the blue line, and it's paying off for Greenfield. The whole tone of this game has changed. Head man pass. Two on two break. And nice poke check by Jordan. Jordan now battling forward in the corner, behind his own net. And Jordan's able to clear it up the right wing boards, and out. Up ahead to Kyle Barnes. And ends up back on the stick of Bowman. Bowman now goes up ahead into the territory of East Hampton, trying to hit Haneski. Quick line change on the fly by Greenfield. Here come the Eagles. Up ahead to Fugel again. Shot down behind Riley Drew. Back to get it is Cam Barnes. Barnes goes up the boards. Not out, though, as East Hampton's able to keep it in. Patrick O'Connor, nice play at the blue line, keeping it in. See what we're doing the other side. Cassie Wozniak trying to knock it out. Can't. East Hampton trying to keep it hemmed in. Dougal after it. And Barnes now. Nice swings reverse. It, swings it back around the other way. And finally out of the zone. Wozniak now on left wing break. Wozniak has a solid with it. Quick shot glove saved by Matt Barnes as Cassidy with a quick shot and Barnes with a quick glove. Another great play by Wozniak. That's the second time she's come up on the side. Gone around the defenseman, going to call the opportunity. 8.50 to go in a very fast moving second period. Shots are now 10 to 6. The uh, Greenfield was down by uh, seven shots after one period. Now they're only down by four. They're controlling the play. Face off to the right of Nate Barnes. And it's kicked in by Greenfield. Again, this is Bowman, cross ice. Centering pass, though, ends up on the stick of Boyle. And it's cleared out. Sullivan now. Or rather, excuse me, that's a McGolgan. And a centering pass tipped wide by a breaking Batchelder. Batchelder was open. The puck was just a little bit too far in front of him. No one between him and the goalie, and no opportunity taken. Rico trying to clear, and they can't. Now, Batchelder, a wrist shot, blocked wide as East Hampton. Had Greenfield hemmed in a bit there, and this is going to be a delayed offside. Greenfield, or East Hampton will clear the zone. Another nice play, a uh, block shot by Bryant. Looking to try and hit in the open ice. Haneski will take a quick 30 second break, 8.05 to go in the second, all tied up at two. This is Bear Country 95.3.
Wozni. Wozni not going to force it now. Pokes it into the East Hampton end. A couple of quick shots off the draw by East Hampton and Greenfield then just a second ago. And now this is uh, Lafleur knocked off the puck, and the Eagles are able to clear. And again, here comes Fugel and Tenzar. Now Tenzar swings the slot, trying to push it up ahead. Fugel back to the point. Zazula shot blocked in front. Puck forced to the boards. 7.15 to go. And East Hampton is unable to keep it in. And they will dump it back in. Strong play by Sullivan in that last shift. Made two good defensive uh, plays for Greenfield. Ethan LaFleur now. Back to Bryce Jordan. Jordan up the boards to O'Sullivan. And it's knocked in by Wozniak to the East Hampton end. Opportunity here if he catches it. That man passed to Batchelder. Batchelder on a white ring break. Batchelder on a tough angle. Gets relieved of the puck. Nice defensive play by Greenfield. That was that was Cam Barnes. Cam Barnes, right. I couldn't see his number. And puck is flipped up and out. Right back in. And now here comes Greenfield. Up ahead to Haneski. Haneski square pass to Bauman actually behind him. And Boyle now brings it up for East Hampton. He is knocked off the puck. And passed up ahead again to Bowman. He's able to knock it in. He has the goal for Greenfield the equalizer in this period. Centering pass. Bowman shot. Wow. What a save. Nate Barnes came up big. That was huge. Play from the corner. Goalie never saw it. He laid out. He just threw his body in front of the net. He didn't know where the puck was going. I don't think he cared. He knocked it down, and that was I thought that was labeled. It was labeled for that upper corner, and Barnes made a huge stop. That's the save of the game so far. Absolutely. Another nice play in the D by 22, Jacob Bryant keeping in the zone. He's tempted to be able to clear it back out. Gold right now slams it back in. Behind the net. This is Jake Delisle now for East Hampton. Delisle backhands it up. Can't clear the zone, though. Kept in by Lafleur. Lafleur battling for it. Wozniak's having a great game. Now the floor check, trying to keep it in now. Lafleur again. Lafleur shot wide of the net. Look to set up Wozniak. And O'Sullivan is in there on a floor check as well. That line's been great. This time. line is playing strong. They're keeping it in the zone. You look out here, they have a big size difference. Much smaller than he's tamped on the shift, and the, the puck's not coming out. The Colbert shot goes wide of the net. And back around the other way, Zazula now for East Hampton's able to clear out center ice. But slapped right back in by Bryant. Headman pass. This is Boyle. Boyle backhanded in. East Hampton needs a line change. Bryant back to get it again. 4.42 to go. In period number two, we are all tied up at two. Another icing. We'll come back and bring it down to the Greenfield end. 4.36 to go in the second. We're seeing a much different period. Much different period. Shots were 92 in the first, and they're 5 to 1 in the second. And we got a little less than five minutes left to play. But Greenfield's playing strong right now, and East Hampton now wants to have something change for them. Great pace in this period, much quicker than the last period. I think there was definitely a feeling out period by both teams in that first period. And, and it looks like it hurt Greenfield more than it did East Hampton. Jordan now for Greenfield. Heads it up ahead to Haneski. Haneski got the shot away. Was being hassled the whole way. And puck at the blue line. Battle for it. Tenzar scuffling with Jordan. Greenfield knocks it back into the East Hampton end. Nice play by Kyle Barnes. Keep that puck in. Oh, Bowman. Now Barnes, a shot goes wide. Bowman couldn't quite handle it. And Barnes got the shot off, though. Just wide. This first unit for Greenfield, keeping it hemmed in. Barnes, Bowman battling. And finally, it clears the zone. Up ahead to Tenzar. Tenzar, wrist shot, saved by Drew. He'll go up and hang on to it. Faceoff will be to his left with 3.48 to go in the period. That shot by Tenzar would have been a little wide. I don't think they'll count that as a shot, but it's an opportunity for East Hampton to finally get that puck out of the zone. Strong defensive play, strong wings. We had wings on the blue line here. Just playing strong. Kyle Barnes kept that puck in twice and was almost rewarded. Got a great shot from the slot, just deflected wide. Face off to the left of Drew. It's run by Greenfield, goes to the boards. And kept in by East Hampton. On the right wing side, slammed back in by Pat O'Connor, who has a goal in this game. Jake Bryant now, backhands it up. 
Wozniak's able to chip it out to center ice. Cassie Wozniak still with it. Wozniak, shot Ooh. just wide of Barnes. She is everywhere tonight. She picked O'Connor's pocket on that one. He wasn't expecting it, lifted a stick and went off with it. That man pass. This is McColgan. Got through, shot goes wide. Rebound on the far board, Jake Bryant now. Hammer to the board by McColgan. Knocked back around and out by Greenfield. The oh, puck's on edge, might make it all the way for icing. Waved off. Back to get it is Pat O'Connor, he swings the net. Fresh legs out there for Greenfield. Oh, and a steal at center ice by Nate Barnes, or Kyle Barnes rather. And it's knocked back in by East Hampton. Jacob Bryant behind the net, swings it around, intercepted here. Now McColgan behind the net for East Hampton in the corner. And Greenfield is able to clear the zone. This is Zizula. Bangs it in. Bachelor on a four check. And not quite cleared out. And it gets chipped up ahead. Now here's a break. This is Haneski. Haneski trying to beat the defender. Swings the net. Haneski looking for someone to pass to. Spins back around. Gets bumped. Still with it. Haneski sides in front. Oh. Couldn't connect though with Bowman. In the he got, slot. A, got a little more air in that pass than he wanted. Here's a breakaway. McColgan one on one with Drew. Shot. Saved by Riley Drew. He robbed him with the glove. That was almost a two on oh. He had a clear shot. Great save by the Greenfield goaltender. Great save. Now Tenzar up the left side. Shot goes wide of the net. As East Hampton starting to show some nice. Oh, a big hit. Barry Haneski. Now out of the corner. Shot by Tenzar. Blocker saved by Drew. Back to the point, shot tip wide by Drew again. 135 to go. East Hampton's got some life in them for the last minute and a half. Greenfield shoots it out of the zone, but it's tipped, no icing. Gotta get some fresh green legs out there right now. Head man pass to Wilson. Wilson, wrist shot high, wide of the net. Puck comes back around, McColdrick after it. O'Sullivan, now making McColdrick, fires it behind the net to Cassie Wozniak on right wing, and Wozniak clears the zone. One minute, seven seconds to go in the period. Wozniak now steals the clearing pass. Wozniak, high shot to love by Nate Barnes. He'll cover it up. He'll face it off to his right with exactly one minute to go in the second period. If I was sitting at UMass, they'd be telling me there's only a minute left. <laughs> and you'd be thanking them. <laughs> I got to say, uh, Wozniak's having a great period. Out of those seven shots, I think she's got three of them. Yeah, she's unbelievable. You know, the junior forward. That, that, that second unit has really been solid for Greenfield. Off the draw. Back to the point, McColdrick. McColdrick, shot wide of the net. Comes back around to Bryant. Bryant's shot goes wide to the far side. And East Hampton's able to clear. Bryant now, that man passed for Bowman. Bowman's able to knock it in to the East Hampton end. And on four check is O'Sullivan. He's knocked back around. O'Sullivan, Bowman, and Haneski, the line for Greenfield right now. And East Hampton's going to ice it. We'll take one 30 second break and come back. 25 seconds left. All tied at two. This is Bear Country 95.3. for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. 
Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. I think they play like so many minutes, and if it stays that way, they go to the street. I'm not sure how many minutes, but... At the end of two periods of play, it's East Hampton and Greenfield in familiar territory, all tied up at two. Chris Collins, Todd Howe, Dave Reno, our studio producer, back at Radio Central. What a game, Todd, and a great second period for Greenfield. Great second period, and Greenfield's second line really picked it up. You go to Sullivan, Lafleur, and Wozniak, yeah, yeah, and Wozniak, and, and really played a strong period. They, they kept the puck in the zone. Each time they were out there, Greenfield woke up. I think Greenfield came out just tentative. I don't want to call it nervous, but slower. Kind of like feeling everything out. And they turned it around. And they played their quality of period that time. And they, you know, they learned the lesson. you got to throw the puck at the net. I mean, Nate Barnes is a good goaltender, but Bauman just roofed him on that, uh, on that goal. And I think the more opportunities you get to throw pucks at this guy, the more luck you're going to have, more, more opportunities you're going to have to score, certainly. You're going to have to. I mean, that's what East Hampton's plan was in the first period. They had three guys in front of the net. If the D had the puck, they, they were ready to tip it, block it, keep it out of the way, and, and stop the goalie from seeing it. And, and they just, Greenfield, like I said, they turned it around. East Hampton had a nice late rush. They may take that into the locker room so that they come out in the third period a little bit fired up. But, I mean, we can't sit here shocked that it's 2-2 two two with these two teams. No, I mean, they've, they've, they've tied the two times they've met this season. They've tied. So, but the difference here is there's no tie in this game tonight. You, somebody's got to win this game and, and move on to the finals, which, again, happens in this building Thursday night at 5.30, the Division 3A final. The winner of this game plays the winner of Belchertown and uh, Chicopee, number five against number one. And that's going to be an interesting uh, contest. That kind of, that's began at 3.30 this afternoon. And uh, goaltending, Riley threw a big stop on the breakaway, too, which kept this game tied. Yeah, he did. And there was another good save at the other end. I mean, both goalies had one big save in that period. And, and both times, we're looking at it, ready to say it's in the net. Yes. So it was that close. It was, it was a solid game by the D. It was, a so, it was a solid period all around. I think Greenfield had a much better game in the neutral zone than in the first period as well. He, they weren't as tentative. They were going after shots. They were going after pucks. And they got some good, good momentum. And they kept the puck in the East Hampton's end. So all, all things is good for Greenfield in that period. Hey, it's a tough job to get the puck in the offensive zone. So the defense have to get up to the blue line so that if it comes out to them, they keep it in the zone. And that's what happened this period. Greenfield's defense was much more aggressive. That first period, they're at the wrong blue line, letting East Hampton throw it off the boards and pick it up past the red line. You can't play like that, and I think they knew it, and I think the coaching staff got a message across to them. We're at the end of two periods of play from the Olympia and West Springfield. Greenfield and East Hampton tied it to a quick 90-second break, and we'll come back with more discussion on this one and a preview of our second sports broadcast of the day on Bear Country 95.3. Chris Collins and Todd Howe back here at the Olympian West Springfield. We're tied at two. The winner of this period, or overtime, will go to the Western Mass Division 3A final on Thursday, 5.30 in this building. If it's Greenfield, we will likely be here for that game. We will find out. Kind of recap the score a little bit, too. Greenfield, both goals, both unassisted, both great individual plays. Paneski in the first period, Bauman in the second. That's not their two goals. And like I said, no assists, both unassisted goals. On the other side, East Hampton, Tenzar picks up two assists, and those were solid goal assists. The people putting the puck in that had the easy job in those plays, and that was Wilson and O'Connor for East Hampton. East Hampton will move right to left to start this third period. And again, anybody's contest, lots riding on this next 15 minutes of hockey. And if the first two periods are any show, the tone's going to be set in the first two minutes of this period to see which way the ice is going to be leaning. So we'll see where we'll be calling the play soon. Bauman, Hanefsky, and Barnes, the starting line, will start this period for the Greenfield Green Wave. And we are underway. 
Puck control, by the way, Barnes dumps it back to the defense, and it's cleared into the bench by Bryce Jordan. And that's going to mean a face off to the left of Riley Drew. Not the way Greenfield wanted to start it. They had a uh, plan in place and knocked that off the boards, and they, were, they had a skater cheating. And the draw controlled by Greenfield. Aneski is able to skate it out. Aneski battling for it with Delisle. And now Bauman with it. Bowman. Tough angle. Short side shot blocked by Barnes. Behind that it goes. On the right wing boards, Tenzar knocks it back behind the net. Zazula around the boards. Battling for it on the right wing boards is Haneski. Bauman over there helping out. He's tempted trying to clear. Bauman hemming it in. And quite the scrum, waiting to see what happens. East Hampton's able to clear. He's knocked back down by Jordan into the East Hampton end. Delisle back to get it for the Eagles. Headman's to Dylan Wilson. Wilson goes cross ice to center, but it's stolen by Cassie Wozniak. Wozniak shot wide of the net, partially blocked. Wozniak centering pass poked by O'Sullivan wide. Cassie Wozniak's been the player of the game tonight. More solid play, more solid play from her. Greenfield now. That man pass at the penalty box. Knocked back into the Greenfield end by Fugil. Up the wall. There you go. Up around the wall to Lafleur, And cleared out. Right back in by East Hampton. Back over to get it is Jacob Bryant. Taking his time behind the net. Waiting for it to set up is letting East Hampton change. Fires it up the middle. Yep. Up to center ice. And East Hampton fires it right back into the Greenfield zone. That was O'Connor. Now behind the net. Greenfield up the boards. Kept in by East Hampton though. Back out there is Bauman again. Shot goes wide of the net. After is McColgan. McColgan trying to center it. And it's poked loose. And O'Sullivan on a partial break. Actually, that's uh, Lafleur. Now O'Sullivan. Lafleur got hammered. Penalty coming up. As I think that's going to be a boarding call. And it's going to be a power play for Greenfield. Power play for Greenfield. I don't understand the call. They're actually calling interference based on the sign. Looked like a board to me. Well, he hit him hard enough to knock a dent in the boards. <laughs> and it really was a boarding play. Either way, it was definitely a penalty. The ref once called an interference. We'll run with that. But that put Greenfield big advantage two minutes into this first period. They now have a two-minute power play. So Pat Delisle is in the box for two and a power play for the wave. This could be huge. <laughs> Jake Delisle is a big piece of that, that team. That's going to hurt putting him in the box as an extra penalty. Draw goes back. McGoldrick. Now a one-timer by Bauman goes around the net. Kept it on the point by Haneski. Haneski in there battling for Cassie Wozniak out there on the power play. And East Hampton's able to clear the zone. Yeah, Greenfield's really rewarding this line. They've played well. They deserve to be out there. Jake Bryant just cleared the path into his own bench. Which will bring the face off back to the left of Riley Drew. That's the second time that's happened this period. The power play line for Greenfield is Haneski, Bauman, and Wozniak trying to take advantage of this power play. Face off to the left of Riley Drew. Batchelder off the draw. Shot goes wide of the net. And that is Haneski now behind the net. And here come the wave. This is Bauman now. Crossing into East Hampton territory. Bauman ahead of speed. Dumps it down behind the net. Bryant comes over to pinch to keep it in, and he does. Bryant behind the net. Centering pass to Wozniak. Shot saved by Barnes, and he gloved it. What a play by Barnes. What a shot. Raw, Jesse Wozniak. Great play by Greenfield. They kept the puck in the zone on the right, passed it behind the net. Saw the open Wozniak in front. She got a quality shot off, and that puck flipped up. She was going for it first. Unfortunately, goalie can use her hands. Nice save on his part. Keep it two to two. Bauman now on the draw for Greenfield. Face off the left of Barnes. Now, the nasty shot deflected off Barnes into the corner. Another solid save. He had to come out and cut down the angle and made a nice stop. He stamped and bangs it around. Haneski now at the right point. Dumps it back down low. Bauman. Hit on the boards by O'Connor. Scrum for it. 51 seconds left on the man advantage. McGoldrick now. Passes it over to his defense mate. And a missed shot. Couldn't get a wood on the wrist shot, but Bryant. Scrum in front. 
Back to McColdrick. McColdrick. Cross ice pass. Wrist shot saved by Barnes. And he held on to it. That missed shot, it, he practically whiffed, ended up being a great opportunity because the goalie came out to block the angle and he was completely out of the net. It softly goes behind the net. Greenfield wings around and all you can see is the goalie diving back. He never touched the puck, he never got control of it. But Greenfield's sitting now with 34 seconds left on this penalty and, and they've gotten a few shots. They now lead the game in shots, 13 to 12. Been a pretty good power play so far for the way. Face off to the right of the goaltender, Nate Barnes. And again, Quick wrister by Hineski, goes wide. Now Barnes after it, this is Kyle Barnes, but it's knocked away by the East Hampton player. And back to get it is Cam Barnes for Greenfield. Barnes, cross ice to Hineski. Hineski, over to Nate Barnes. Barnes, shot, save! Ooh, he almost, almost got through on that one. Now a short side shot by Hineski is blocked. Barnes, back to the point to Bryce Jordan. Back to Barnes, tough angle, glove saved by Barnes, by Nate Barnes of East Hampton. And that is the end of what was a pretty good power play for Greenfield. A couple good opportunities from Kyle Barnes there. To get the last shot in, another good save. Uh, they're just, they're playing well. Let's see now, every time after a power play, hopefully that offensive key can keep the momentum going. The faceoff's in that zone, so see how East Hampton responds. Face off the right of Nate Barnes. 11.02 to go in regulation, 2-2 score. At the point, wrist shot over the net by Bryant. Goes all the way over to the far side. Tenzar tries to clear. And asks if he's going to wind it up out of the zone. And here comes Tenzar. In the Greenfield territory. Tenzar on the right side. Loses control behind the Greenfield net. Tenzar still with it. Still with it. Turn around. Wrist are blocked wide. Somebody put a body on number 32. Now well, it calls for Jacob Bryant. He did it. Wilson now behind the net. Tenzar, back around again, pushed up the boards, and still kept in by East Hampton. That's Fugel trying to get it in front. Fugel spinning away, loses control behind the net to Tenzar, back to the point. One-time slapper tipped by Zazula, goes wide of the net. Dylan Wilson is after it. Wilson to Fugel, and right now Tenzar is after it. As East Hampton's got it hemmed in Greenfield's end pretty good. Greenfield's playing a box in one right now. They're not challenging anybody and they're controlling puck. Zuzio's shot, blocked in front, shots that score! Camp down low with Tenzar. And that is a big, big goal for East Hampton as Tenzar was just camp looking for a fat rebound and he got one. Free two. I don't think Tenzar really saw that puck. Another player, I, I don't get the number yet, he'll be recording an assist on this play. But he was in front of the net and he fired it, misfired it, and it goes off of Tenzar, off his skate, no kicking motion, the goal's gonna count, and it puts East Hampton up three to two. Well, that's a big goal for East Hampton after being hemmed in pretty good on that power play. They came back and hemmed Greenfield right in, and it's three two East Hampton with 9.50 to go in regulation. Bauman now swings the net. Up ahead to his line mate, Hineski. Hineski up to Kyle Barnes. Kyle Barnes to Hineski, Hineski shot just wide of the net. Comes back around the other way, Bryce Jordan keeps it in, slides it back down, around behind the East Hampton net, and the Eagles are able to clear. Pushed back in by Jordan. The goal was actually scored by Dylan Wilson, so it's his second goal of the game. Up ahead now, Wilson has it again. Excuse me, that is uh, McColgan centering pass. And Greenfield tries to clear it out. So that goal was given to Dylan Wilson. Yeah, I don't think the I don't think they got it right on this one. We'll see if they correct it. I don't think it later. they did either, but in any event, Wilson gets credit for the goal. And Greenfield's got less than nine minutes to get an equalizer and force an overtime or get two and take the lead. Dumped in by East Hampton. Well East I, Hampton can trap the neutral zone now, probably, and get away with one. Centering pass, Batchelder loses control of it. Ends up on the stick of Bauman, and here comes Bauman. Bauman pushing ahead into East Hampton territory. He's got to get off. He's, he's tired, he's winded. Slap back down to the East Hampton end. You can see in that play, Bauman went off the ice, puck went right at him. He just avoided it. Yeah, he was exhausted. <laughs> he's not going to even risk too many men on the ice panel. Quick icing, and the faceoff will come back down to the left of 
Nate Burns. I want to thank some of the sponsors making this broadcast possible. Albert Herring Services, Gilmore and Farrell and Shirts, the Sullivan and Bray Attorneys at Law, Jim Donato Parks, Taylor Rental, Taylor, Taylor Real Estate, excuse me, <laughs> East Hampton Savings Bank, and Kobe Hibachi Sushi Bar, among others. Off the draw, kept in by Greenfield. This is Sean O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan out of the corner, shot short side, saved by Barnes. And East Hampton's going to ice it. You're probably going to see a lot of icing or a lot of clearing out of the zone as East Hampton tries to protect this 3-2 lead. Anytime you're going to try and protect a one-goal lead, it usually leads to bad things. East Hampton can't change their game plan. This period, Greenfield has run the offense because of the power play, but East Hampton can't just be throwing it down. That was another good opportunity. Nice save in that. Face off to the left of Barnes. Puck slamming around the zone. The Tenzar. Tenzar up ahead in the Greenfield territory. Bumped by McGoldrick. Tenzar still with it. Tenzar tries to slide in front. Delisle shot. Love saved by Drew. And they will face it off to his left. The 7.48 to go. I can't believe Drew Egan saw that puck. That shot was right in line for me to the goalie. I couldn't see him at all. And all of a sudden I see this glove stick out. Great save. Face off will be to the right of Riley Drew. Again, coming up later today. High school basketball on Bear Country, Pioneer and Franklin Tech. 345 from Northfield. Barnes now off the draw, up the boards. Kept in by East Hampton. And Greenfield's able to clear. You made a comment earlier about doubling this line up. They're out there again. Yep. Pushing ahead is Batchelder. Batchelder swings behind the net, tries to stop it. Saved by Drew. Backhanded up the boards by Bryce Jordan. Barnes up and out. Up ahead to Haneski. Haneski ahead to ball and all. It's poked away by the East Hampton defenseman, but Haneski ends up with it. Tries to push it to the net. Can't. It's blocked. Barnes after it. Back to the point. And the shot from the point is blocked, but kept in nicely by Alec Jordan. To the far boards. And the Eagles are able to clear. Up ahead to McColgan, who pokes it in behind the net. Jordan now swings it around for Greenfield. 6.51 to go in regulation. Batchelder now in deep for East Hampton. Centering pass is deflected off of the defenseman. And here comes Bauman again. Bauman up the right side. Gets bumped off the puck by Delisle. Nice play. Nice play by Delisle. He got to use that body. He didn't get the puck. He got to take the man. Now McColgan up ahead to Batchelder. Batchelder falls down. And O'Sullivan now back to pick it up. O'Sullivan spins back away from the attacking East Hampton Eagle. Fires it up to center ice. Now a steal at center ice by O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan backhands it ahead. Blocked. Back to the point. McCulver shot goes wide of the net. Quick shot from the other nice side save. by Bryant. The big save by Barnes. And this is going to come all the way down to Riley Drew. Six minutes to go in regulation. Lucky McCulver now swings the net. That man's it up to the right wing boards. Cleared up but not out. Kept in by East Hampton. Now McCulver comes back, comes back around to get it. Tries to force it out, but again, O'Connor keeps it in. Now McCulver's able to clear the zone. Nice play by the D there. Wozniak was cheating. She had an opportunity if it got by the defenseman. McCulver now. Up ahead looking for Wozniak. And it end up on, ends up on the stick of Ethan LeFleur. And back to Bryant and clear. I don't think we've had a whistle for about three and a half minutes, and that clock keeps running. Greenfield's got two opponents right now, East Hampton and the clock. Tenzar now fires it in, saved by Drew. Big rebound comes out on the stick of Ethan LaFleur, loses control, and finally clears. Tenzar now slams it back in. Oh, that puck had eyes, ended up in the glove of Drew. And they'll face it off to his left with 5.07 to go in regulation. It's a good whistle for Greenfield because the play was all in their defensive end. They had no chance to get a change, and now they're bringing out their top line. And you can see there's a lot of uh, sticks on the knees here, so there's some, some tired players right now with 5.07 left. East Hampton 3-2 on a goal. It was credited to Dylan Wilson. Draw control by Greenfield. And now here comes Haneski. Haneski, partial break, shot just wide. Puck comes around the far boards. Bauman is after it. Kept in by Greenfield. Haneski battling for it on the right wing. Oneski's had a great game today. Down low to Barnes. And they swing it around as East Hampton and the Eagles are going to try to clear the zone. And they don't. 
Now they finally do. Oh. And now McColgan. McColgan. Oh! Oh, and he got buried! What a hit! By Bryce Jordan on McColgan. He lost a glove and he's hurting. He's out of there. Yeah, oh my god. He goes off to the bench. He got hit hard. It was a clean hit. It was definitely a hard hit. I think he just saw next week. He left his glove behind. He's lucky that's all he left behind. It's correct. Now East Hampton's able to clear the zone. 4-14 to go in the game. Up ahead to Ergil. And Fugel, rather, goes into the corner. Greenfield trying to slam it around the boards. We're now at the four-minute mark. Time's running out. Back at the point. And Greenfield's able to clear up ahead. Oh, trying to hit Barnes in the open ice. And this is going to be icy. We'll come back and face it off. 30-second break. This is high school hockey on Bear Country 95.3. Off the draw, Greenfield down, trying to clear the zone. They can't, kept in by Zuzio. Shot is deflected in front. And Greenfield's finally able to clear the center ice. 3.24 to go in regulation. 3-2 East Hampton. Fugil now on the right wing board. Blocked off the puck. Now O'Sullivan cycles back to get it for Greenfield. Trying to clear the zone. East Hampton keeping Greenfield hemmed in. And every second that they do is one more second. Greenfield, less second Greenfield has to shoot and score and tie this game. East Hampton is stacking the boards on the shift so he can't get out of the zone. Now they clear finally. And this is going to be icing. They're going to bring it down and face it off to the left, the right rather, of Riley Drew. And again, that first unit will come back on. This could be the last uh, the last stand here, uh, Todd Hill. I think, uh, I think you'll see this first line again. Don't forget, in, in high school hockey, we got one timeout per team. None, none have been used. I think Greenfield's going to bring out this first line for this 255. Try and get a solid 45 seconds out of him. Bring him out maybe two or three times. Face off the right of Riley Drew. Draw goes back to O'Connor. O'Connor, wrist shot through a screen, blocked in front. And Greenfield clears the zone. Up ahead to Bauman. Bauman in it. And Barnes came out. Great poke check. Penalty coming up on East Hampton. They're going to get a tripping call. Now the question, wait a second. No, they're gonna, it looks like they're gonna call holding. Because anytime you call tripping on a partial break, yeah. or you're thinking penalty shot, I can guarantee you the Greenfield bench was looking for penalty shot. It looked like it was a trip in the clear, but it's gonna be a hold. But it's gonna be a power play. So 2.41 to go on the game clock. Regulation, that is. Two minute penalty, so for all the 41 seconds, Greenfield is gonna have a man advantage. And I think you're gonna find out now, Greenfield might take that timeout. It looks like they're going to play it on. They're bringing out the second unit for the start of this power play. Huge, huge turn of events here. Greenfield trails by a goal. They have a power play, and they could tie the game in this 5-4 advantage for two minutes of the 241 remaining in regulation. This is what hockey's all about right here. They draw one by East Hampton, and they're able to clear the zone, but just the center ice as Bryant's able to glove it down. And now, Tenzar is able to knock it down into the Greenfield end. Now we have an opportunity here to think about pulling the goalie. Will they pull the goalie when that first, first line comes out for the rest of this power play? And that's the hit on the boards into East Hampton territory, and Tenzar is able to clear it out. McColdrick back to get it for Greenfield behind the net, being pursued by Delisle. McColdrick clears the zone, and this is going to be icing which you don't want to see happen in a man advantage situation. No, that's a tough break. I was surprised when the East Hampton player went in there deep. You know, Cameron, no, not Cameron, I'm sorry, Gary Fusel went behind the net. Just unheard of, because if he gets caught behind the net, you're coming out five on three. But he made a play, forced an icing, and now the puck goes back to the Greenfield defensive zone with a minute 20 left on the penalty and two minutes left in the game. Face off to the left of Riley Drew, and this is going to be the timeout. Greenfield's going to call, we'll take the break. Two minutes to go even in regulation. 
Time out, Greenfield. We'll take a 30 second break. This is high school hockey on Bear Country. Ref Cats coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Collins and Todd Howe back out here at the Olympia in West Springfield. Our studio producer is Dave Reno. Greenfield High School calls a timeout. Here's the situation. Two minutes left in regulation. 120 on the Greenfield power play. They trail the Wave does 3-2 to two to East Hampton. Face off to the left of Riley Drew. So Greenfield's got two minutes to tie this game and force overtime. The interesting play here is that if Greenfield can win the faceoff and take the puck out of the zone, will they immediately pull their goalie? Or are they going to wait a little while longer with maybe a minute left? Be interesting what they talked about. They won the faceoff. They win the faceoff, controlled by Greenfield. Slammed around the boards and out. Tenzai. Actually, go cross ice into East Hampton territory. O'Connor back to get it. O'Connor swings the net, tries to clear. And they do. They clear the zone. Fugil. One-on-one, -on -one. Hugo, shot, over the net. Just over the net. Puck comes back around the other way, and East Hampton, and Greenfield clears his own, but it's knocked back the other way. Now here comes Jake Bryant. Jake Bryant into the East Hampton territory, but the Eagles are able to keep it out. Greenfield's pulled their goalie. So six on four, 41 seconds left in the bin advantage, two men advantage, actually. And Greenfield clears it in. Empty net for Greenfield. Tenzar. Slams it down, just misses, no icing. Smart play there, they had the opportunity. Greenfield was caught offside, they had to check back. So he had a free shot, just missed it. Bauman now, ahead, a minute left to go in the period. In the game, actually, in regulation. Knocked into the East Hampton zone, O'Connor behind the net. O'Connor, back to the point, McCombrick, slap shot, blocked in front. Bryant now fires it on net, deflected wide. Bauman on the other side, six on four. Now it's a six on five advantage. McCodrick, slap shot, blocked in front. Centering pass, goes through the crease to the other side. And East Hampton's able to clear. Still net empty for Greenfield. McCodrick back to get it. 27 seconds left in regulation. Time for one more drive for Greenfield. Bryant now, 20 seconds left. Bryant skates it up. Bryant crosses. The blue line. Paneski. Ten seconds. Bauman back in in front. Block in front. Shot. Saved by Barnes and covered it with 7.3 seconds left. Oh, you're not going to get closer than that. Oh, they threw the puck in front. Bryce Jordan was in front. He was facing the wrong direction. Hit his skate. Was going between the legs. Would have counted it if went in. Another great save. There's nothing you could do. The 7.3 seconds left. I know Griezmann's got a set play in their back pocket, and it's coming out right now. Face There's not off much time left. To the left of Nate Barnes, 7.3 seconds left. 3-2 East Hampton. If they can hang on for 7.3 seconds, they go to championship Thursday. Draw to the point. Out of the zone, McColdrick. And East Hampton's going to win this hockey game. The final score of the East Hampton Eagles, three. The Greenfield Green Wave, two. Wow, and the Eagles are mugging their goaltender. Hey, he played great. Played great in the end right there, too. It was a fun game. It's a tough one. We knew we'd have it close. We thought we'd have an overtime. We're probably hoping for an overtime. But a great finish. Greenfield made some strong plays at the end. They had the opportunities they wanted. They outplayed in the third period at the beginning, but East Hampton scored the only goal. The final score, the East Hampton Eagles 3, the Greenfield Green Wave 2 will take a break and wrap it up from the Olympia High School Hockey on Bear Country 95.3. Sports Ref Cats coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. 
Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employees. Attorney Daniel Gray, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Now back out here at the Olympia in West Springfield, our studio producer is Dave Reno. And the folks from FCAT are here. Great game. Did not end the way Greenfield wanted to. 3-2 the final. The East Hampton Eagles advance to the championship next Thursday. But what a game. It was a great game. It's tough, tough to have a game like this and have any team walk away losing. But Greenfield played well. I think they'd like to take back that first period. After that first period, I feel they outplayed East Hampton. They definitely had the momentum in the third. But in hockey, momentum breaks when you score the only goal of the period. And Greenfield wasn't able to respond. A fantastic season for the Greenfield Green Wave ends. And, uh, you know, all you can say is the future looks bright. they got a lot of good kids coming back. They lose some seniors. But uh, this is a program that's, I think, built for, uh, for another championship run next year. It's been many years where the co-op was talked about. The co-op finally happened. And we see the result. We've got playoff hockey in Franklin County again. It's a nice thing to see. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching uh, this broadcast of uh, local high school hockey on Bear Country 95.3. Coming up a little bit later on, Pioneer versus Franklin Tech in Division Four boys basketball action. 3.45 pregame, 4 o'clock with the tip from Northfield. For my broadcast partner, Todd Howe, our studio producer, Dave Reno, and the folks from Frontier Community Access Television, I'm Chris Collins. The final score, it is East Hampton 3, Greenfield 2. Thanks for listening to Hockey Night in Greenfield on Bear Country 95.3.